thank you. Welcome to Omaha for game two of the men's college World Series finals. And somehow the last nine days here have been even better than we hoped. And today we're promised at least one more chapter in this epic tale. LSU leads one zip in this best of three and it's Tigers and Gators. Really a bat. Goes the opposite way toward the gap in right center and splits it all the way to the wall. Gavin Dugas puts the Tigers on top here in game two. How locked in is this guy? Oh, they got him out with a bunch of sliders last night, and after spitting on a couple of splits, he earns himself a slider. Here you see a slider just sitting there, but I love how he keeps his chest over the plate, just does a beautiful job of staying on and through that baseball and 106 miles an hour in the right center field gap. And that's why he wears number eight. Uh, and they are all extra base hits. And that one foul. No, they say that's yeah. fair. Evans didn't even leave home plate and that ball is gone. Well, we told you there would be offense with the wind blowing and Ty Evans down the line. And this game is tied. Why he's in there, Berkey? Yeah, um, Ty Evans is leading the College World Series in home runs. And, <laughs> and he didn't start game one. <laughs> I don't know that anybody had that on their bingo card, a four-seamer down and in, and that is what you call dropping the head on one and he's just not sure is that one going to stay straight this is where the wind blowing out helps it right because the ball does yeah. not curve as much side to side and you can see where this one lands relative to the fans up there in that 2-2 two -two. and white on a line into right field the base hit Pearson gets waved around to the plate and LSU leads You don't accidentally drive in 100 runs. You know what the heck you're doing up there. Tommy White certainly does that. A hanging curveball just up around the belly button, right? We talk about you got to get off speed pitches up. You got to hunt the ball up. And that certainly was a soft breaking ball right around the belt. And Tommy White does what he does best, which is drive in runs. Now 102. Mighty on impressive. Morgan in the air. Left field and Shelnut goes back to make the catch. Cruz tags and scores, and it's a Trey Morgan sack fly to make it 3-1 Tigers. Get going. A one. Langford pulls it past Tommy White in the left field, the base hit. Carlin stops it second. And right on cue, Wyatt Langford arrives here at game two. Ackenhausen still out there against Jack Caglione. Grounded out sharply his first time and rolls this one into center. Curlin scores and Langford and Caglione deliver. And Florida's within a run here in the third. One, two. Rivera on the ground in the left field of base hit. Langford waved around. Pearson's throw is cut. And this game is tied at three. Big lefty. Heyman on the ground towards short. Thompson bobbles, and they're loaded for Florida. Breaking ball to start, and Evans skies this one down the line and left toward the uh -oh, corner. Uh -oh. Pearson back at the wall. Uh -oh. That ball is gone! It's a grand slam for Evans! Twice to the pole. Are you kidding me? That ball was hit to the clouds. And we knew at some point the win was going to be a factor today, but that's the first one where it has really shown up. 51 degree launch, a first pitch breaking ball hit to the sky. 51 degrees, are you kidding me, KP? Still one on nine off the bat, but backspin and wind carries this one out off the bat. 
You thought maybe it was going to go foul, but it wasn't going to leave. Instead, it's a grand slam for Ty Evans. And the Gators strike back with five here in the third. So far, a one from Gidry. Off the end of the bat, squibbed into the shift. Dugas a long way to go, and he doesn't get Langford, who can burn. Yeah, it's 2 0 to short. That's Gavin Dugas to Thompson, who will hold it, and then throws it away. Curlin scores, and it's a five run lead. Oh, the second big blunder from Jordan Thompson. Gives the big game. lead, and Caglio oh. goes. Travinsky's throw. <laughs> Got him. Didn't fly under the radar quite like he has. Uh -oh. And he tags it. Left field and launched by Wyatt Langford. Destroyed. <laughs> the ball he hit last night would have ended up in the same place in that inning back spot. Yeah. This is this is about as good as you can do it. A hanging slider, and he now has the two farthest balls in the history of Charles Schwab Field. Just a bomb fest that Wyatt Langford is putting on. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's so solid, stable, and simple. Uh oh. Caglio the opposite way, and that is back toward the wall and gone! Back to back for the Gators. Number 32 for Jack Caglio. Breaking a lot, a lot of droughts here today, KP. Oppo launch piece for Jack Tawney. And how about the inning for the Gators? Double hit by pitch, homer, homer. And that'll bring some smiles to that Gator bench. And now, Jack Caglione alone. Josh Rivera chops it at Tommy White and it kicks off his glove. And everything is coming up Gators. Three runs early. They left him loaded in the first. They left him loaded in the second. Shellnut up the middle, off the glove of Thompson. Rivera to the plate. Thompson's throw does not get him. And it's a 10 run lead for the Gators here in the sixth. A winner, one of three finalists for the Golden Spikes. Do it again. Carlin pulls it and it drops down beside Josh Pearson. Curlin digs and doubles in the seventh. How do feel about himself going into that start tomorrow? Langford ropes one to the wall in left. Curlin scores, and Wyatt Langford is some kind of locked in right now. It's another laser. It's, he is so much fun to watch him when he gets it going because he does not miss the barrel. Everything is barreled up. A fastball down and in. We saw last time was a 450 foot homer. This time just a lousy double. Puts a dent in the left field wall as it approaches. Wyatt Langford for Travinsky these last few. Chopped to first, and Trey Morgan waited on it and flips to little. For out number two as Langford scores. Drying up. Lines this one toward right center field, and a base hit. Shelma took a big turn and gets back to the bag. First two on for the Gators here in the eighth inning. Such a strong dude. He doesn't have to manufacture a lot with his load. Ropes another one in the left and oh, Pearson oh, can't it get it. He needs a triple for the cycle and will stop at second on another bullet. What do you think, KP? Should he should he put the gas pedal down here? He was going to be out, by, be out by about 30. Feet. <laughs> yeah. Pearson dives, and when he dives, you think maybe there's a chance. Right. He laid out for it, but 
Did a good job of getting back to his feet. Jack Caglione on an 0-1. And Caglione pulls this one to right and to the track. And Joe Bear looks up and it's gone. Caglione second. And it is a Gator onslaught in game two. What's the launch angle? What do we got? Wait a second. 114 miles an hour, and we are being told 56 degree launch angle. We we thought 51 was interesting. What, what about 56? Ryan Pell strikes this one well. Center field. Kling looks up, and it's 20 for Florida. Their sixth home run of the ball game. Six homers in, in one College World Series game, and Ryapel knew it to dead central. A no doubter, and on a day like today, you get one like that, you can get into your slow stroll. What a bomb! By BT Ryapel, 400 had an AB in the College World Series. And Prevest pulls it in the right field, and he's got a hit in Omaha, and then this one gets past the right fielder, Ethan Fry. And that's the way it's gone on both sides here in this one. Sophomore from Ocala. Lines this one to left center field, and it's a base hit. And Florida's got 24 runs in this game. The most ever in a College World Series game. And why not at this point? Uh, hang and break a ball that Faye, actually, that was not bad. He's a pitch, yeah. Fabian, go down and get it. Get in your legs and. Drives in the two runs that makes history for the Gators. Joe Bear, center fields to the track and got. Braden Joe Bear to straightaway center fields and LSU gets a solo shot here in the ninth. And the Tiger fans that are left are still excited. Yep. That one. We are just not used to seeing the ball just ease out to dead center field, KP. Mm. Well, we got something positive on the Tiger side to end with. Joe Bear stays on one. Yeah, that just kept going. That, 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 that looked like a root. Ficarota one strike away, and it's on the ground off of Ficarota. Caroms to Fabian. He flips. Wow. Ball game. Ficarota's fired up. And Florida fights on to a game three against LSU tomorrow night. That was a heck of a play, by the way, to end that thing. <laughs> I mean, off the bat, this thing's humming, and Ficarota wears it off the spike and then goes dead sprint over. Fabian hits him in stride. Mike Foot just gets down there. The big boy went five complete today to lock it up. 24 runs for the Gators, Christopher. Well, I don't I don't even know what to say about that offensive performance, but the, the Gator bullpen was fantastic and Caglione and Langford put on a show today that has to get this Gator offense going. One of the most talented groups in America put on a show for us today.